I'm a student of the classics. And in the world of AI video generation, there is nothing more classic than Will Smith eating spaghetti. In the ancient times of March 2023, user Chaindrop shared the now iconic clip in the r slash Stable Diffusion subreddit, which you can look up because it has a Wikipedia page. Seriously, you can read all about this. What's important is that since that day, humanity has looked to this confluence of Italian carbohydrates and Bel Air's Fresh Prince to light our way in the darkness by serving as a test of any of the new video models that are released. So when I was invited to the closed beta of Kling's new motion control system, a feature where you can input a character start frame and footage of human movement to drive the video generation, I knew that I would need Will Smith to inhale just a bit more tomato-covered gluten, which is exactly what happened while I was conducting all of my testing and feedback, to which, by the way, I was sworn to absolute secrecy. But I have good news. Kling motion control is now in open beta for you to try yourself and I'm allowed to share with you all the wisdom of the ages I gained while doing my extensive testing. So today, let me be your Uncle Phil. I'm gonna show you how to navigate the new interface, what to expect when you're preparing and generating sequences, as well as some tips and tricks I picked up along the way. Hey look, it's a segue. So we're just gonna jump right in. If you're in Kling's image to video interface, right between the prompt window and the negative prompt window, you're gonna see the motion control window. Now when you click on that, it's gonna warn you that motion control is only available in model 1.6 right now. But from what I've been told, they're working on getting it implemented in model 2.1 as we speak. Just hit confirm and you'll be greeted with a blank screen. Don't worry, this is normal. Motion control is gonna need a character image input before it can do anything. You can select any image that you've previously uploaded or generated in Kling. I'm gonna upload this new image of our guy in a tuxedo. Looks like he's in an awards show. What could go wrong? Right after uploading, you'll notice that Kling is analyzing your character image. Now, I'm not entirely sure what is going on under the hood. I think it's some combination of a segmentation model and maybe an open pose. Kling is making some kind of estimation as to where all your character's limbs and body parts are. It's going to need to have some sort of understanding of all of that later when it tries to apply footage to this image. One thing I was a bit frustrated by was how particular Clean can be about the images you upload. Not for any sort of content filter, it just often can't figure out where your character's limbs are and rejects the image. It's recommended you use an image from at least the waist up, and I'd recommend making sure both arms and legs, if they're present, are visible as well. Once you land on an image Kling can actually wrap its head around, you'll be taken to the full motion control interface. This is where you're going to select your motion control footage and your orientation, either image or camera centric. I'm going to talk about orientation a little bit later on. In the center of your screen, you're going to see a mannequin that should be vaguely in the position of your character image. You can kind of think of this mannequin like the fulcrum of the entire motion control. Kling is going to figure out how to map your character image onto this mannequin and your motion footage onto this mannequin. That way, it can map the motion footage onto your character. Just like with the character image, your motion footage can be selected from your history or uploaded. Now, in theory, any MP4 that shows humanoid movement should work. You could take footage with your cell phone. You could use the puppet tool in After Effects. You could even upload another video you made with AI. For this example, I'm just going to use a screen capture I took from Adobe's Mixamo. There's lots of character models on there that are already pre-animated. But if you're just looking to experiment with the new beta and don't really want to mess with all that footage, you could use one of the pre-made motion library animations. Much like when you imported your character image, Kling's now going to generate motion based on the footage you've imported. This could take a while. But once it's done, you should see the motion you imported now on the mannequin in the center of your screen. Next, hit confirm in the bottom right and it'll take you back to the standard Kling interface and you're ready to generate. From here, everything works pretty much like Model 1.6 always has. There's pro and standard versions, and you have 5 and 10 second durations to pick from. The only difference is going to be the credit cost. For every 5 seconds of generation you do with motion control, they're going to tack on 15 more credits. So 15 for 5 seconds and 30 for 10. One last thing to take note of is the prompt. There's really no point of putting one in, as to my understanding, that feature's not working right now. And that's it. Now you hit generate and off it goes. So what can you expect when you're working with motion control? Well, our last scene's a pretty good example of one thing. 
The character's start frame is fine enough, but the motion footage is rough at best. And it's not just because the recording quality from the screen capture isn't very good. I found that any animated 3D footage or 2D footage just never really worked all that well. It's too lifeless, for lack of a better term. Best I can figure is that the motion control model was trained mostly on actual human movement or motion capture. A lot of the time, 3D footage would just get rejected right at the start. Obviously, anything that's not actually humanoid isn't going to work very well, so now is not the time for your spider cats. Honestly, never is the time for spider cats. Why am I the way that I am? Look what I've done. Why? Let's talk about character images for a second. I think we all know AI image generation can be a bit hit or miss, and yes, you can do style transfers from footage start frames, but the big hurdle is always going to be getting Kling to accept this initial character image. Most of mine just got rejected right at the start. But I don't want you to be frustrated. I want you to have the expectations of success. So I'm going to give you the workflow I came up with from all of my testing. And in that workflow, you need to start with this character image. You want to be able to see the arms and the face for torso shots. You also want to be able to see the legs if it's a full body shot. As stated previously, I came up with a lot of wills and a lot of styles and a lot of them just got rejected. But before I shot anything, I made sure I had a character image that would load in the motion control interface. You can't switch the image after the fact in clean, or it just deletes the entire scene. I know it's motion control, you would be forgiven for thinking the motion is the most important part. Turns out it's the character image. Next, I think you should shoot actual footage of an actual human. Use whatever camera you have. I used a webcam. Unfortunately, I misplaced Will Smith's celly, so I had to stand in for him. Fortunately, I live in New York and pasta is readily available. I ordered some takeout, set up a card table, and started shoving linguine in my face. I ran everything out of a laptop, which meant I could full screen my character image and do my best to match the start frame pose. I was only ever marginally successful at that part, but like I said before, the motion footage analysis is much more forgiving, and any difference in pose or angle between footage and character can be handled with the image to video orientation setting. Let's look at an example. Here, I was using footage from a totally different character start frame, but the image was accepted by Kling, so I figured I'd run it. Notice that the camera angle and framing are very different between the two. We're giving it two inputs, so motion control has to rectify the discrepancy between the two. And when I select image-centric orientation, the generation starts with a very dramatic camera move, transitioning from a Dutch angle to more of a straight-on shot. I found this very confusing. Why does the image-oriented shot change the shot angle away from the image right off the bat? Want to get more confused? Look at the video-oriented generation. The Dutch angle from the image is preserved, when I thought we were orienting around the camera here. Took me a hot minute, but I figured it out. Think of it in terms of image character orientation versus motion character orientation. In the image character oriented shot, Kling is trying to rationalize the motion footage under the assumption that the character position in the image is the correct one. Not the image's background, not the image's shot angle, the character is correct. If the character is correct and the motion footage is from a different angle, then the world around the character has to move. It's a character image centric universe and everything else has to orbit around that as such. Conversely, in the motion-centric universe, the character from the footage is the focus, and everything has to be reconciled around that. Which is why we see Will Smith and his spaghetti sit upright to match my posture in the footage right off the jump. The camera move, or lack thereof, is just kind of a side quest. That's not what Kling is looking at at all. Orientation is selecting which character's physical position is going to be treated as the correct one within the universe of the generation. Look, I know that was a lot, and it's still kind of confusing. It was driving me nuts for like a week. No matter how I set the orientation, I almost always had a discrepancy that had to be reconciled between the image and footage at the start of the animation. This pre-roll reconciliation will cut into your motion footage time. Yes, you can do 5 and 10 second animations, but the first couple of seconds are often going to be eaten like so much fettuccine, so that should be part of your expectations as well. Trying to perfectly match motion control outputs to create one long shot 
might be a pretty tall order, I probably would not recommend. One thing I was curious about, exactly what kind of motion could Kling translate to an animation? The notes and guide warn against any fast motion, sure, motion blur and AI is a killer, but what about my face? Would that translate? Well, sort of, like half credit. Here I was trying to exaggerate my jaw motion to match an exaggerated illustrated image. I promise I don't normally chew with my mouth open. And, uh, sort of? It's a mess, obviously, more of a hallucination than anything else, but it looks like Kling is trying to pick up my jaw motion. Okay, eyes. I kept glancing at my laptop to try and hold a pose close to the character images. Here you can see motion control doesn't pick up on the initial eye move, but it does look like a match when I refocus to the camera. On two different generations, no less. Now I'm starting to worry about me. Is this blinking matching, or have I been at this too long? Am I getting the AI crazies? Let me know in the comments below if you think I have the AI crazies. The Will Smith spaghetti test exists for a reason, and one of those reasons is that make food go in human face hole is really hard for video models. Kling is no exception, and 2.1 is a better food plus face combo than 1.6. I get some nice motion control in these shots, but it's tracking me, not the linguini and the eating part frequently goes to crazy town. And yes, that's just part of the janky charm of Will Smith eating spaghetti, but 2.1 is just better at food and eating and all the little stuff. So keep that in your expectations as well. Again, I'm told they're working on getting motion control in 2.1 as we speak. Let's put a bow on this thing with some tips and tricks. First of all, get comfortable. These generations are gonna run about 15 minutes. Part of that's because 1.6 is a slower model, Part of it is because the motion control adds a lot to the generation time. I know I mentioned that real human footage always works better, but for character images, I found better results from illustration or animation type images. That's not a surprise, that's not much of a motion control thing, that's just an AI video generation thing. Speaking of video, if you find 3D animations, say from Mixamo or this site, ActorCore, which I've never heard of, but Google exists, if you find these are getting rejected a lot, Try a more human looking model or skin. I found 3D mannequin animations almost always got rejected. Same with orcs or anything weird. The more human looking, the better your chances. I guess they didn't train the model on a lot of orcs. When importing motion footage, you might run into a bug I hit more than once. Sometimes I had trouble loading a file at all. The import window would never open. Dragging and dropping wouldn't work. It would just open the footage in another tab. Pretty sure this is a bug, but I have a workaround. Right click and copy your footage from Explorer, go back to the motion control window and control V to paste and that should work. On a Mac, I guess you whisper to the ghost of Steve Jobs, control V. I don't know, I don't know how Macs work, I'm gonna be honest. Guys, we did it, we got there. That's my full guide for Kling's new motion control. Let me know in the comments if you've tried motion control and how you found it. You can also let me know if this helped you out or if there are any other guides or tutorials about AI you would like to see. There are socials in the description, you can check me out there. If you are from a company and have a tool you would like me to check out, you can DM me on any of those socials and I will get you an email. And if you stayed for the whole video, nope, you are getting back in your web. We are not doing this again. I'm sorry guys, I gotta go. Like and subscribe.